Okay, so recording is started. <clears throat> Let's start with questions then. Who has questions? What do you want to understand? What what don't you have still understood? And what are the things that you want some confirmation or some things that advice or any anything that would just help you in one way finish your intra interim report uh, or your interim submissions and another way also just kind of make you feel good so use this opportunity for that anyone wants to go on you can type also if you have any kind of anything on top of your head hi yeah baba yeah okay. can i ask yeah okay. yeah my question is uh, to, on today's assignment yeah uh, when we uh, when we submit the report yeah for task 1.2 yeah are we preparing slide like last week or uh, we... no I, I think if you look at the document it really says you know what it's even graded at right they have loan so i'm just going a week to challenge and i'm just going to present so if you look at that so first is what is kind of the point about, right? So this is the first point is like the four points you would get for answering task 1.1 correctly and with enough detail. So nothing got to do about it's kind of presentation and reporting is just a generic name, but so it's about in any way, right? And then presenting statistically varied interpretation of the results from 1.2 and then Presenting clear understanding of the difference between classical, sequential, and machine learning based AB or significant testing. So, this is the full point that you would get from at least the presentation aspect of it. And then, from the technical aspect, that the GitHub code, which just basically does the work and it's object oriented, and frequently you kind of did frequent commits, and somehow you worry, you, you kind of put some time in putting in in coding the part of your plot, right? So it's like that you actually produced a good quality plots that I, you know, whose axis is label, title, blah, blah. That's it. So now, based on that is what is all graded. So whatever you do, this is what we are gonna look at, right? And then if you go back then to what is the submission, then, um, share a report that addresses the points from task one right prepare uh, so this is in, in the format that you could share as a learning ex exercise with third year students it really is a guide to address those points but in this format if you just deliver the points that we we would be looking at when we when we are kind of uh, marking or kind of assigning some score to it it's just we look at those points. So we say maximum three pages. Definitely, this is uh, it could be a PDF, right? it could be a slide, or it could be just in whichever way you want. But if it is slide, probably it's much harder to condense them. So usually, you know, you you probably be answering question by question. Um, it's much easier. Yeah, does that answer your question, you? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Great. Okay, fantastic. That's also a question, uh, Elias. So where should I start? I think they like, great. So, okay, so same. Do you have uh, another question before? Okay, go on, same. So, yeah, my you can hear me, right? Uh, so my question is about the sequential yeah. testing. 
so okay so basically in the description at the beginning of the jupyter notebook it says the log probability ratio that's the one we're going to use to either accept or reject our hypothesis yeah okay so and then it gives above that it gives us a formula right yeah but when we were below that there's basically a graph showing us a lower and an upper bound if yeah. the if a and b are static yeah then how does it change with the amount of data that we have so or is it just s that and our uh, so what is our b log beta? probability that's going to change so beta is is actually the power and the power yes. is computed by n using n okay and therefore as you get more number that's why it's a linear it's kind of it's as a function of n so normally okay. that's what you are increasing so you are you would have it small but then it kind of increases so okay. n is the factor so it's always of course it's the only difference is just n so the difference between classical and sequential is that now n is not anymore constant but it's a variable it's a random variable okay um further question yeah. about the sample code given could yeah yeah is there any way we could get a brief overview of what the inputs and the outputs mean because sure. They're not labeled, so it's hard yeah, to understand. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a code contributed by one of uh, person that works with me um, in in at Mudio. So, but it's basically you know of course there are supporting functions, but what is most important is um, if you look at just what he implemented is here, right? So it's just uh, on this one. So. I will just go to, so it's given here, it's probably it's the main, so you looked at this reference as well, right? This is more conceptually, you will understand better. Um, so let's imagine. So he implemented this. So the codes are basically just from there. Like, I mean, like the implementation is from there. So, um, so whenever he says this term, that term, there should be, um, okay. I think this is not a full, thank you. Someone is accepting. Can someone accept, like, from our team? Maybe not. Um, where am I? There's a PDF. Uh, there should be a PDF somewhere. I need to get that new flat. Ah. Okay, there should be, I think, um, let me ask him if he has the paper, the implementation, but let, let, me, let me just try to go through uh, first just what is more important. So, 
so these are basically just what you would know, like so given beta, um, and and then the the bam alpha, alpha. So that's you. Okay. I uploaded the paper on okay. Rocket Chat. Okay. So let me just go through it. Um, Okay. So, okay. So now let me stop and let me go through the paper. Um, let's just go to this one. So who can explain, for example, so what is this part? Just you, can, you can go through, like I will go through and then just let's read it together, right? Just this is one aspect where you would, like sometimes of course it's not if you haven't seen it, but this is what it's called. Um, just this, this part alone, just, uh, is basically the binomial distribution, right? So you have a P that is the probability of success uh, in, a, in a kind of a binary system and a binary outcome. And then you basically have uh, N is your trials, number of trials, X is your number of successes. And then you are saying like, okay, P1, which is your uh, success rate, is a general uh, sense like so you're because this is the, the the distribution of two systems so that means you have in this case control and um, um, so the control and um, uh, exposed so so the, basically you have two like it's a basically a product of two conditional distributions or two um, Binomial distribution. Now, so P one, like you are you okay? So then, um, okay. So the odd ratio is so you, you don't know. So the one part that you don't know most of the time is the population P. That's what you are not um, like you, you. You're kind of making the hypothesis. So if we read from here, let P I denote the probability of the member of population. So that's what you don't have. Like you have to know, that's where I also highlighted last time. Population, you have no idea. Like in statistics, what really you have to know is that there is a sample and there is a population. Population is usually, you still assume that it exists somewhere. That means like if you, you know, from the population perspective of humans, it would be like in a country, you, you may have 100 million people, and then, but you, what you have is some kind of like a sample from them. For example, if it's a voting, how many, you know, whom they vote. Let's say it's just two, two only options like yes or no, that they want to, they support or not support, for example. So in this case, if you, if you kind of have the entire population voting it, then it is no more an issue because you have the entire population. So, you know, the statistics, it's, it's no more statistics it becomes something else. So statistics is only when you can't sample the whole population. So when something is kind of random enough that you will apply some statistical formulas, right? So in this case, so P1, uh, PIs are the population one. What you would observe, like if you observe, for example, 
10 successes out of 100 trials, what you get is that is a uh, kind of uh, sampled probability. So that means an estimator, okay? So for the moment, assume that the hypothesis is H0 P1 is equal to P2. So this is basically what we are, um, like the null hypothesis, and then the alternative becomes P1 less than P2. Now, in our, just to make it like this, uh, our current case this week, what we have is there's control, and then there is um, the exposed ones. So what you are saying, like you can split, because again, these are people, so fortunately we are, we are putting users. So there are users who are kind of, who haven't seen an ad, and then there are users who have seen an ad, right? For all practical purpose. And then we assume if we had infinite samples of those people or like basically the entire world, the potentially everybody who could see that ad who are kind of connected to the internet. And if, if we really kind of uh, give them and, you know, of course making equal time, you know, not blah, 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 then that's what's called P1. P1 would be the probability. So let's say just the one means in this case, the ones who doesn't see the ad. So like, okay, the ones who hasn't seen the ad, they have a probability of knowing that brand. So in this case, let's say the brand is Nike, right? So the probability that the general population will have, uh, uh, will know Nike is P1. And then now let's assume everyone else who actually then has seen that. It's, that's basically P2. That is saying like the probability that um, so or let, let me just bring them because the alternative is the other one. So P1, let's say like the ones who has seen the ad, and P2 who hasn't seen the ad, the entire population, if you had sampled, if, if it reached the entire people who could read, who could you, who, whom you could reach, then you would basically get um, P2. And assuming P1 and P2 are different because that your treatment or the ad, assuming the ad has uh, a way to make people know Nike, and let's say it has D. Like that means like a probability, a lift that's called lift. So lift of like, let's say if it's small, it's hard to measure, but let's in this case, 10% lift. So that means, you know, let's say P1 is uh, less than P2 because there is a lift due to uh, associated to the, to the brand. You can always stop me. I am not seeing you, I'm not reading. So, ah, okay. So you have to speak. You have to tell me uh, whatever you want. You have to tell me. Um, because I can't see, I'm, I'm just on the uh, on the paper. So you have to unmute and, and tell me. Okay. So now the probability is that you have run, so this is writing it mathematically, you have run X1, uh, so N1 number of uh, experiments on a control group, or that means you have N1 con uh, users from control and N2 users from um, uh, exposed. And the number of people who replied, let's say in this case is X1 is yes, R, or like X1, um, out of the, yeah, out of the, out of the exposed X1, out of uh, N1 exposed X1 replies yes, out of uh, uh, control N2, X2, I mean, it's like, okay, so replied X2 or say yes. And then assuming the population is P1 and P2, all these are assumptions, right? Because it's theoretical still. And that's the distribution, it's a product. Assuming they, so why do we make this product? Can anybody tell me? What does, why, why can we make this product? Or what makes us, what assumption do we have when we do the product and not have some other terms here? So, so to learn more, be interactive. Guess, otherwise, uh, you I would spend waiting for you, and we have very limited time. So, if you really want to learn more, just be um, you know, unmute and say, yeah, uh, go on, um, go on Stacy, and and then something. Uh, is it independence? Exactly. Yeah. So, Samin, do you want to add anything? No, okay. I have a question. Yeah. So my question was, yeah, sorry, my question is, so uh, about the Git, I think. 
Okay, so but we'll, let, let's just finish this one and then I'll definitely we will continue on that. So mm -hmm. let's just finish this part um, and we definitely will, will go to that. So, so as Teshi said, this is because of independence. Because of independence, there is no term which specifies the correlation. But if they were not independent, if the control and the expose doesn't come from, you know, if they had some kind of correlation if, or if there are common people between the two, that would have put a term here. But because of not that, so it's called a naive base approximation. So I know it's like some of you might have heard it. It's a very common, very simple algorithm in machine learning called naive base for many things, for spam detection, whatever. That just basically means like when you have this kind of very big distribution, you can assume it's, they are independent, right? Okay. And so uh, by then you you kind of you introduce some models gamma and lambda and you kind of um, so you you will give them what they mean later but using just the odd ratio parameters like you would be um, you can parameterize what the population p1 and the population p2 are right because it's basically a really reparameterization because odd ratios are computed out of t's p1 um, so if you know T is being the odd ratio is P1 over one minus P1 divided P2. So it's basically the, their probabilities uh, divided. Uh, so basically that's what odd ratio, whenever you do kind of football baiting, you know, in any game baiting, what you really look at, what they give you is this odd ratio, right? So what is your odd in winning, like, or a team is winning. It's kind of, you get that number, when the odd is very, very high, then, like your reward for betting that becomes high because like you know it's unlikely that per, that team will win therefore people will bait you know it's like blah blah so i think those people who are in different countries who knows how to why they are betting blah blah that's what's like odd ratio so and because of that if you alpha is like that i think gamma somewhere is there and if you just transform it then you will get um, basically just this P1 and P2 parameterized. So gamma is related to the overall magnitude of P1 and P2. So, okay, so, and it, yeah, so some kind of parameterization applied uh, to make the mathematics work because mathematics works this way. You do certain approximations. So if you are from mathematics background, you know what it means. Whenever you want to prove something, you, do all the approximation that doesn't probably damage or kind of is not too much but it makes your mathematics simplified but the most important part is this is the likelihood ratio so so the ratio given x1 t1 and t2 so t is defined above is some some kind of probability that you have defined and hc you have defined it to be this way so that's again um some kind of probability this is again for for the sake of um, modeling, it's like and and this t is becoming the odd ratio um, in this case, um, and therefore you're kind of parameterizing it now with as a so everything is knowable now. Um, okay, so so this remember this hc this is basically our model of probabilities or likelihoods, and our likelihoods are kind of now are parameterized with this t. So accept H naught. So um, so what he is now coding, then if you see, is basically just these functions, so these different functions, CLRN uh, and CURN. So and this CLRN and CURN are the lower bound and upper bound, right? Where yeah, blah blah. So I'm just kind of moving for the sake of time. So um, you can see in this in this one. So what are the critical values? So R, N, and N. So R is X1 plus X2. So basically every, everything that's given and CL and CU are defined by this uh, function. And F and R kind of defined by those functions, like by this function. So, so every, every, everything here is computable because T is again, um, defined by the so this 
just the relative probabilities, the old ratio. And that's it. And so when you, so you can actually here compare. So the, this is a cumulative success. And then uh, you compute R and then you compute CL. And this CL and CU are basically what you what you see as curves, like in the so what you see here uh, are these curves, like basically rejection borders. So the upper and the lower. And so if we go in each code, that's what, um, so this is factorials, you know, the factorial one, um, and the L chooses, like if it's, I think, um, blah, blah, so. Um, so this one, for example, if you go to the equation, you will basically get it this len, you know, this len T1 and T0, is basically this, uh, where is it? So, you know, G is basically H like that. So this is, this is um, what he defines as G. So because if you take the log of that, this becomes log of X T1 minus log of X T naught. So that's basically what he's doing. And and so it's like there might be some some what is T naught and T one how he defines it with that equation, but but then H is um, he does he have H somewhere? Yeah, H is here, and and I think he defined again what is like so. I think it, he's using exactly those variables. Uh, what is H, what is F in this case? Probably there might be T as well. So the F term, the F term log. So, so this is the F term inside that. And then the F term log is basically just that. And so, and then you compute it for T1 and T0 and then the old ratio. So is that is that clear or is it is it can I and then you finally you would compute lower and upper by basically just collecting all the terms. So any question here? Like how? I as I said, I don't see it. So if you can please just unmute and say it, that would be great. Okay, now I can see. But any is, does this help? Or do I need to say more? And in which direction should I say more? So oh, if you, yeah, Stacy. About the the likelihoods. Yeah. Uh, I thought the likelihoods come from a distribution. Uh, but the way you are absolutely the way it's right. done there. But this is a mathematical proof because the thing is, like, I think this is a distribution. You know, this is almost. This is a distribution, but for this particular equation, so that distribution you call Gaussian or anything is just this. This is a distribution. So instead of modeling it as as kind of Gaussian, he's of course modeling it as form of um, as, as in the form of uh, some kind of like uh, I mean it's a binomial. So and the binomial has all these terms, and I, and I think you know if I read I can tell you more. But just basically, because of all this approximation that person does, he, he uh, they could derive the conditional probability of x one given r and n. They manage to to derive this equation, right? So and this becomes a distribution. Now, if you have uh, if you provide it uh, r, it's like if you know, for example, um, Poisson. Poisson has two parameters. One is the mean rate, and then n. Right, so in this case, just is really more like that. Except here, there is also t. So if you kind of compute this, this becomes a distribution. You can plot it for different n. If you fix r, and if you fix t, then you can plot it as a distribution, so as a one-dimensional distribution. But but this is a function of t. That's why what you see the you know what what you see here the curve is basically actually within them. This is actually a distribution along each time frame. There is a distribution. These basically points are the minimum and maximum 
uh, for that alpha, like for that significance, this. But if you increase the significance, that basically significance means it cuts the distribution, right? So 68% confident interval will be in here. If it's 90, it probably will, start, will be here and here. So you can assume for every time stamp, there is a distribution, like that's coming out of the screen. Is that clear? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So normally, if you you know to know this is more to make it very accurate, but if you otherwise you could have just assumed the likelihood is some kind of beta distribution, and blah blah blah. But here you need to take into account time because you are you want to be able to basically check it like every time, and it's called multiple testing. That means when you when you not only so statistics doesn't work if you just use every of your tests you do, it's called test statistics. So if you, even for that test, if you see something 100 times, of course, randomly you might, you might see them. So it's basically um, it does 0, 0 0.9 uh, probability for, uh, for example, head and tail doesn't mean that you will, you will see uh, 9 out of 10. It just means like you might even see 3 out of 10. Right? Even if the probability is 0 0.9, the reason is because the number is small. But if you, of course, increase the number large, then it will tend to be just exactly to 0 0.9. But as the number gets smaller, it, the sample might give you a very, like, instead of 0 0.9, it might give you 0 0.6. You know? And if you, if you actually draw two, you might even get the value 0 0.5. If you, if you generate actually one, you might get one out of one, which means like zero. The probability, if you just use that only number, the probability of success could be just zero, while actually the, the population is 0 0.9. So that's why it needs to take into account this increase in change. So that's why always this thing, um, this distribution, of course, at the beginning, basically becomes white. And then it kind of goes narrower and narrower as you get number. Okay? Anyone, any question? Does that help you? Does that confuse you? You know, as I said, I believe in just anyone uh, asking. Elizabeth, yeah? Sorry, uh, thank you. But from what I'm seeing from the The max estimation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are breaking um, so much that, that I can't hear. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? I can hear you gone, Elizabeth. Yes, I was asking. I had come in late, but from the slides I'm seeing you sharing, when we are doing sequential testing, yeah. are we relying on statistical inference from like the maximum like likelihood estimation, where we are trying to narrow down to a specific point? Yeah, it, it, it is. So the very, very simple way to say it is exactly, it's always, you know, you will assume if there's only one, if you fix N, that means the number that you would test, it's easy. It's just a classical, a classical one. That means N is fixed. So basically then you, you would assume my data is distributed, you know, binomial, but if the N increases, you know, then I will assume for, and an, um, I will assume a binomial distribution <clears throat> or a Poisson distribution or a beta distribution, which are all related in some way, and, or a Gaussian if the larger number. And then I'm just going to assume that's, that's my distribution, and I'm going to test I'm like the likelihood ratio. And if it is above a certain one, I will declare it significant like that. So this one, the sequential is really to be able to test when you have 
two people answering the, the query the survey, <clears throat> you want to be able to still to answer, is it significant? And then if three people, then you would want to ask the same. But if you do that, the, the statistics doesn't work nicely like that. That means n is now variable. So you're not fixing n. So n is now a variable. Now when you introduce n, that's where you get a variable n. That's what you get um, sequential testing. So it's exactly that. It's still, a pro, you know, getting the maximum likelihood, or basically in this yeah, exactly the, the the distribution or the maximum likelihood. You take the ratio, and that's what you do. But now, when every time you do that, you assumed actually explicitly that n is fixed, that you are doing it once. But what if you want to do it many times? You have to incorporate that part in the modeling, and that's called variable n. So that's where sequential testing is coming. So the, the point is that, as I said, if you get the general idea, it's fine, because the, the, it's complex. It's like if you do the mathematics part. So anything, any, any of, if, if the idea is clear, I think you are OK. You can answer with that everything that is there. And all you need to do is basically, if it is just in the code, I mean, basically, you you know, everything is written here. You don't have to understand the mathematics. You basically just, you gave it, you know. Um, so you initialize, basically, this is the number, expose the control that you're going to give, right? So, and you can give it as some kind of sequence. And um, basically, then the... A and B are what is returned from, so what is kind of returned are, so outcome, um, N, K, L, and U, these are lower and upper bounded, and um, stats and limits, so what is this, the stats, so it, it's basically the limits would contain also L and L, U, so it's like, let's see. Yeah, so this is CLU and RA, so the limits basically just the the past as well. So not only the current. So L and U gives you the current points, but uh, the limits would give you just the past as well. That's why it's an array, and therefore you can plot it exactly. Those lines that you will plot will be just L, you know, the the in within the limits. Okay, and stats are kind some kind of uh, part and truncate decision. Is like what you would specify is like, you know, do you have to stop at a certain number? You know, that's basically um, what it would, it, would, it would do. So that means continue or not. So I think there is some truncate decision somewhere. Um, um, blah, 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 blah. So, so stop is, if you give stop, then it becomes, um, it, I think it translates to in the, it will check it against against this truncate decision. So that means I think it's going to be true or not. Yeah. So truncate yeah. So truncate decision is when the decision happens. Which one is is that H zero or H one um, that is it's kind of uh, that that is winner or is that uh, is that the null hypothesis or the alternative, right? So all of them are basically just that. That's what um, what you will use here. So if you call it with the right inputs. The inputs are for this code. The inputs are x and y. So basically, the the um, your your arrays and t one is so t one. I think the the um, that's odd ratio. Is he computing the odd ratio? Um, Yeah, Babel, can you share this link with us, please? Which one? This one, the this second suite. Yeah. This, this is in the in the week, in the week to repository in the folder. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, T1 
T is basically, that is the odd ratio, uh, exactly, that is what you would compute um, from here, sorry. So this is T, so P1, 1 minus P1. So you'd have to compute it this empirically um, in the state of the population from the sample. So that is what you will be computing. So T is this one. And then the X and Y are basically just uh, so I, I I think so last time I mean that that's uh, part I don't know if Kevin and um, so so here is the I think probably that's good like so you can get um, example here. So if you read this one, you basically know how to how to give it to, um, yeah. So what I'm not sure, yeah. What you are given is exactly zeros and ones, right? So that's exactly what you're gonna give, and you're gonna give just basically as a function of time. And t you will compute, I think, within. I think that that one I have to ask. Um, where, like, because you have to still pass T. Ah, T, I mean, that's odd ratio, right? Um, okay, so I will get to you now. So, like, we'll talk, I will ask in the meantime. Um, yeah, so I will ask in the meantime, and we'll know um, T1, what T1 is, okay. So I will just also probably invite the same person who did the code here So anything else, it's conceptually at least. So from the code, we'll know what is T, but once you figure out what T is, basically you have basically just the data, X and Y and T, and then you receive um, the result. And then from that is just visualizing. Anyone else? Is there anything still like? Is there any issue that would uh, that would be that would limit you from submitting this assignment? Submit, yeah. Submit, go on. So can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. So from task 1.1, some of the question that I understand seems like so they are general, I think. And so I don't know how can we answer. So I mean, uh, can I answer that based on my analysis or just I have to give um, no, I think, my... Hmm? I think the 1.1 are more general. A lot okay. more they are not it's about understanding because i wanted you just to have a basic understanding of what hypothesis testing is so um in that case that's the most the in the part um so if i look right here you know like how are user targeted i already answered some of most of them right while talking so could we use count of yes again general what is the statistical process that generates the data? You know, that's again general. Um, so you could write yes yeah, because it's just a Bernoulli process, and then we can model it as a function of as a you know binomial. Um, 
Okay, so Ababa is here, so he will tell us about the code. So, but um, so I'm just gonna going over here, and Ababa will give it to you uh, some of the questions. So, and assessment of the statistical significance of A/B test is dependent on what kind of probability distribution, um, whatever follows. Given your answer above, which statistical tests, A/B tests, this test, it's are appropriate to use. This is general. In classical, we use p-values to measure the significance, you know, blah, blah. You know, what information do p-values provide? What are the, the type one and type two errors? Again, this is general. How does a classical test framework work? This is more of a brief description. Um, and again here, uh, and then what are some of the advantages? You know, again, general. Was A-B testing done using machine learning? This is general. Pros and cons, it's general. And basically, I want you to just understand what exactly I have been saying. The most important part why you translate into machine learning is that machine learning gives you that kind of this feature importance uh, element, right? So that means now your question, if you are kind of really understanding it, that what we are saying is that is this the treatment where we are treating? That means, like in this case, in the data sense, it's that experiment column does that column have some predictability if so how significant so machine learning can tell you the kind of feature importance that way so if you can if you can understand it frame phrase it in your own way that the point that's it so 1.1 is done without any coding 1.2 is about exactly what it says like do some kind of analysis okay so there's no need like all the parties to understand. Ababa? So, okay, so I, yeah. I have another question before. Yeah. About the Git. So, yeah. uh, do you mean that we have to create a repository and we have to add our work or yeah. just the Git from yeah, that I think we, it just... we got from the DVC? No, no, no. I mean, it's easy just for now. It's like to start learning how to create an empty Git, right? It's basically it's a very simple thing. Git in it. And you create there um, just an empty folder and you put it and you clone it or you kind of uh, add the remote link. And then you basically just add your codes. So in this case, I want you to just start an empty, an empty folder and start from there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I think there are, there are a couple of questions, but Ababa is here, just I want to say. So Ababa, because there aren't any explanations here what each parameters are, can you tell us what is X, Y, and T1? I can understand X is, uh, um, so just tell us maybe that the from control and blah, blah, what are the variables? The bar, are you there? Yeah, I'm trying to use my mic. So Hello, because it's, it seems uh, T is odd ratio. Yeah. And but I I don't see it also coded. Um, so. So if if we look at the paper, so you are coding this paper, right? If I don't. If I'm not mistaken. Exactly this one. Yeah, so this T is basically this odd ratio. So are you computing these P ones from where? Like, are you are you computing them in some way? So alpha and gamma, are you are you using them in some way? Yeah, I'm trying to predefine the alpha one. If you look, into, I don't know which code you are using. Are you in the okay? Are you in the collab one? So alpha and beta. So you you basically alpha and beta are given here. Yeah. Yeah, because this is power and this is the uh, basically the significance level. So this is the ninety five percent significance level you want to test, and beta is the power of the experiment. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, exactly. You are right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because it says yeah, if it is like that. If beta is great, I think beta is crazy because beta could be above 0.5. I don't know why you think it's unrealistic. Is that because um, somehow it doesn't work for this formalism? That's what you mean? Yeah, if you look into the paper also, there is 
highlight terms here like to use beta usually below that point let me quickly check so uh, you know um, just another point for you guys like this is how you do at work it's like you take somebody's code you do and you have to just get them whenever you want and then blah blah okay it's, it's, it's maybe what i can do yabi just yeah. Uh, is that my collab notebook? Or yeah, exactly. So I will review each of them and define all the variables there. Yeah, but it, it will be good because it's today that the submission has to be. So we just only have to have to do the most basic thing to tell them what are the, the points. Maybe you can just refer them and then we will write them um, later. Because here, for example, there is an example, right? So in the numerical example, let P I denote the probability of positive secondary effect. Uh, the hypothesis is T1, T is equal to 1. Oh, that means the order ratio is 1. And the other one is T is equal to 3. So it seems to me T is what you define. The order ratio, like is it kind of... Um, is that... Yeah. And alpha is, as you said, defined 0 0.05. And beta is 0 0.1. And yeah. so for that is basically, so, so these are basically what, so. Let me, let me get. So basically T is equal to one is no actual difference. And how, how big is the difference you expect? Do you have to say that number? You mean the T1? T, uh, initially I defined T, T node at T0 as a 1, and then okay. the in our upper, the C in our upper function predefines T0 as 1, 0, then it will be changed. But is it a vector or is it a thing? So maybe just refer it and then it will tell us because I want to know is it a vector or is it a value? That's value, no vector. So that, that means, but it's like you say T1. Yeah, so exactly. T1 is basically just what you would expect. Odd ratio should exceed one. So that means you basically have to define T1 yourself. And is it X and yeah. Y is like a, a, an array, right? That's an array. An array of numbers. Oh, that means just zeros and ones that you get. Uh, maybe I'll be, let, let, let me let me go through it and I will define okay. a couple Good. of minutes. So just do that and I will share with you the folder. So update the, the part and um, I will update the, uh, with that. Exactly. So, so if this is not clear, as I said, you, there is nothing to uh, inhibit you from submission, even if this part is not kind of complete, right? So um, if you understand it, if you make it work, great. If you don't, basically just ignore this one because the the until we give you that like the clear uh, explanation for each of the terms, but at least what is really required in uh, one, two is the basically the I mean this part you can do it without anything and perform uh, hypothesis testing the classical p-values this one you can do it's not and it's only um, so this is again power power analysis right and what does A-B testing tells you is brand awareness increased or exposed. Actually, th there isn't anywhere which says uh, that you have to do a sequential testing. If you manage to do it, that's great, but there is nothing stopping you to finish this. Okay? But hopefully we will be able to give you such that you will, you will have uh, you will also run and compare, be able to compare for yourself. 
በህጉ ያ ማይን ኢዝ not a very specific or technical question <coughs> but uh, it is that how can we know that types of a, a probability distribution uh, given a data like i have a data of a company of its sales yeah and i have uh, the kind of data you gave us and i have another kind of data so how yeah. can i know the type of the probability distribution it is in exactly because you ask the right the, the the kind of question how is it collected and then you think about what it means it's like is it discrete is it continuous you know for example if it's a sales it's probably continuous if it's money it's continuous if it's a survey that they have to only select they have two options it's a binary and then if it's binary then you ask is it random if it's random then you say it's Bernoulli and if it's so then you basically just say like okay i mean uh, whatever probability could be 0.9 and 0.1 that, that means one can be very biased it's like like, like twinkle or quintos right but it, it, it's okay and then you say like okay if it's bernoulli then what is what is the question that i have am i asking the time difference between one person uh, answering one and the other if it is about that time then it's definitely it's a gamma distribution the reason is because gamma it's kind of is all about time differences or poison or is it about number i might ask it about to get the number that i you know how many in a certain amount of time that means if it's about number it's bernoulli uh, binomial sorry then I, I i know then if the number is large then it's cause uh, it's kind of gaussian gaussian always everything when you have large number it's, it's Gaussian but also if it's continuous then you ask like how is the error like the sales which kind of the the error is it's equal or not if it is you know being low and being high are equally um, symmetric then it's a Gaussian if not then you find something that's that suits it and that's how you find is that clear yeah your definition is clear but yeah. i don't see the data you gave us categorizing in any of the probability distributions you stated no because it's like you you just have one user comes in and it looks they have only two options to say yes or no it's like a coin toss so you you, you could replace that user by just a coin and say like you don't know what the person is answering right if you knew, then you don't even, it's not a problem. So that means for you, you have equal probability for you, for that person to, to actually answer yes or no. So that becomes a coin. You can replace each, each data point now by, by a coin. So that's why it becomes Bernoulli. So I have to go because I have another meeting, unfortunately. So um i think there are probably a number of questions here that i can't answer but can you just post them uh, before you go to uh, the rocket chat and we can answer and you know submit whatever if needs to be we will talk again we'll have this kind of sessions uh, tomorrow sorry that about the time but good luck cheers guys Bye-bye.